Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago. As usual, I've got a wild one. It sent to me uh, by Kristen, Trevor City. It's it's crazy stuff. Grandma's gone off the rails. Yes, there's mental health implications. Yes, I know about it. So does the court. So go clutch your pearls someplace else if you're one of those people, which is very few of you. <laughs> When we get to that clip, it's the clip number two. You can just you can just head over to uh, Care Bears and and soothe yourself. Um, and we also have the the cranky judge sent to me by a fantastic anonymous source. Let's get this party started, shall we? They're home. Well, what do you mean? I mean, that tells me virtually your daughter who is uh, yeah. 15 says she's being mistreated at her father's. How, how had, had he been regularly visiting at that point? Yes, he had. They had been going over every week, every other weekend. And um, there's been many times that the kids have come home and said, we don't want to go back. Jasmine posted a video saying that she feels like she's being mentally abused over there. Um, I do have, I screenshotted every, every single um, picture from the video. Do you, do you understand how often that I hear teenage kids saying, I don't want to go someplace because half the time because they don't want to go because they're away from their friends or this or that. What do you mean she's being mentally abused? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, she's, she, on this post, she said that. He's not standing up for her when his wife is calling her um, a bitch, a whore. Pardon my mouth, but that is what was posted. Um, she doesn't feel safe over there. Because, Why, has she ever been abused? Not that I'm aware of. Um, <clears throat> not that I'm aware of over there, no. It's just the the constant, they're always arguing. She... Back um, a couple of years, I want to say it was a couple of years ago. Now I would have to get the report. Jasmine called the police because they were fighting. Um, later when she came home. Who was fighting? That him and Mike and his wife. Okay, well. And that they couldn't even get out the front door. She wanted to come home and he wouldn't bring her home. They even couldn't get out the front door because there was broken glass all over the in front of the front door. You see the problem this guy has. He got married again. When was that? Um, I think that was the last time that I had, uh, or that he had filed for parenting time because I had stopped parenting time after that. So that was back in 2020 or something like that. Um, it's either 2020 or 2021. Yes, two or three years ago, kind of old information. Yeah, it is old information. Um, like they said, the newest information is that, you know, she she says that they fight. They, they stop the fighting, but yet they don't fight. She put in there that his wife gets hella drunk and that she's scared to be there. Judge, the wife gets hella drunk. <laughs> I What goes through these people's minds? You're in court. Uh, my son said the last time they were there that she threw his wife threw cards at him. What do you I mean, mean cards? I mean, so I mean like things. playing cards, like 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 playing cards. Queen? Yes. yes. I mean, there's a lot of circumstances that I don't know. Uh, well, my daughter. I mean, let's let me. He was married to her. She's not the worst or whatever, but he was married to this woman. And then one day I said, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try that again. I would like to speak to you, too. Well, you but, yeah, if I get if I have an evidentiary hearing, she will be allowed to. But I don't just interview kids. Part of the reason is um, the court is these are parent issues. And there if if I have an evidentiary hearing, one of the things is to interview the child. But other than that. We don't just go and start talking to kids who one week, one week they want to go to moms, the next week they don't, uh, yeah, why for bother? whatever reason. And part of the difficulty is also just because they have a 
argument with their dad or something doesn't mean we pull it. All right. Uh, uh, kids have arguments and good days and bad days and stuff like this. So, but there is no order that gives him parenting time right now, other than no. that agreed upon. So, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, you're not violating anything right now. I just got to figure out what to do. All right. We're, we're going to kick it off with our uh, hella drunk t-shirts. So I can tell you this, Your Honor, my my daughter does not want to return to that home. He does not. She, she said it's not her dad. She doesn't want to be around his wife. That's what my kids keep telling me. It's not their dad. They love their dad. He has been told numerous times he may come to my home and see his children. He may call his daughter. She has a phone. But yet he, he doesn't do that. All right, let me hear from uh, Mr. Jeltma. You hear what uh, is going on? Yes, I do, Your Honor. You're going to deny probably almost everything, but the bottom line is you got some problems with your kids wanting to go there, not because they don't love you. Right. Um, the main piece, some of the stuff is, you know, how do I want to start this? Like she said, I've been having for the last seven years every other weekend with my kids. Yes. You know, sometimes every weekend you know my son will come over here every weekend but you know for a little bit at a time but the main thing is is some of it's fault you know my wife she has a couple of drinks you know no big deal every parent does well, that um all right go ahead yes <laughs> and, you're allowed to have a couple of drinks but when people come on and start saying that then generally they it, means there's a couple more than they probably should have so go ahead <laughs> but my, my i love this judge that's just subtle but he's just like okay tony yeah like I, you know i'm i'm skeptical of your presentation here and it was unnecessary just 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 get to the point please my wife has never called my daughter a bitch or anything like that because i won't allow it excuse my french <laughs> so and yeah my daughter told me she doesn't want to come over here but she comes over here you know we do things together and have fun and you know probably play games together but most of the time my daughter likes to sit in a room on her good. phone and her not communicate with nobody because she says she's bored here oh well, she's 15. she's probably bored at mom's too uh, when she can't be on her phone I mean, that's right the way kids are all right have you ever tried to uh, just take your daughter out on a uh, Thursday or, or something to dinner and talk to her alone without your wife? No, I have not, Your Honor. Don't you think that would be a good idea? Yes, Your Honor. And even your son. I mean, uh, why is it that you can't do so? Uh, my, my thought is I'm going to refer this to the front of the court for a parenting time uh, review. Uh, probably not order anything specific right now until the friend of the court looks at it. But but the bottom line is, is um, it sounds like you could even contact your daughter or Miss Miedema in a uh, rational way and set up some time that maybe you'd just take your daughter or your son somewhere, something uh, alone and spend some time with them because you heard what mom said and that they want to see you, okay? They just don't want to be there when your wife's there. I don't know whether or not your wife's a saint or a sinner. Okay, I, I really don't. All right, and and I'm never going to figure that out uh, on this. But um, you you ought to listen to your kids. Uh, you're 15. You like her, Judge. She pole dances. Year old is getting old enough to listen to uh, some of her wishes and and talk about them. Although she doesn't get to run this case because she's a 15 year old kid. All right, but right. Uh, but Miss Miedema, if, if he can if you don't get that reference, when I was down in uh, Charleston with Biggin, with a couple cocktails in me, this this judge got <laughs> had a had a case involving pole dancing, and he was so um, uh, defensive of the notion of uh, uh, pole dancing for for exercise. It, it it was one of my favorites of all time. Contacted her and and talk to her and wanted to take her someplace you're not going to interfere are you no i'm not i have no issues with that at all why don't i send it to the friend of the court i'll waive your fees 
Uh, Anna, you both have to talk to the friend of the court. In the meantime, sir, uh, I'm leaving it open that you can contact your son, your daughter. You need you need to hear some of what they say. All right, and 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 listen to them some, and maybe some of it. Look, step parents always get in the way of this stuff. I'll tell you that it's always okay, and, yeah. and kids don't. Kids rarely warm up to the step parent, you know, because he's going to say, you know, <coughs> she's not my mom and, and that kind of stuff. And it, it's a probably way of dealing with it. And I'm not saying that your wife is evil. All right. I'm not I'm, I'm not making that judgment at this time. I'm just saying that you need to talk to your kids to tell them that they're not evil and and what you can do to make things better. Um and maybe you can reach an agreement even before you get to the friend of the court. But at this point, I'm just going to refer it to the friend of the court to hear what uh, they have to say about a possible parenting time schedule. They'll, they will probably even interview the kids. If not, and uh, an order comes through, you have 21 days to object. If you object, I'll have a hearing on parenting time. And at that point, I will talk to the kids because that's part of my my requirement at that time all right but i suggest sir that uh, you've heard what they said um about it talk to them take them out to the lunch take them out to dinner take them to a saturday well skating or wherever you want to go okay and um i've got your i absolutely love it that uh i actually did video on that way back when that he, he needs to go that was a fraud from the get that's beautiful your assurance, Ms. Miedema, that you're not going to interfere if if uh, it's something like him, just him doing stuff with the kids. And, and I have, have no issues with that, Your Honor. Um, call your daughter. Talk to her on the phone. Text her. Um, that's how I roll. That's, that's some of the stuff that they simply want, okay? And see if you can't fix the whole relationship. Maybe they're out in the field, and I'm not. I'm not saying that they're not. I've look at. I've done this kind of work for forty years, and I understand that the kids. Your Honor. Go. Yes, sir. Um, another thing is, my kids have come to me before and said, so, "My son mainly has said something about his, her boyfriend's drinking because he drinks every day after work or during the day." And that, he, what's that? Your motion for anything, and uh, you know. I'm not going to get, this is just going to go down the tubes. If, if it's her boyfriend, it's your wife, it's this, it's that, it's the other thing. The kids belong to the two of you, not to either the boyfriend or the wife or whatever, okay? They belong to the two of you. And if you can't communicate and figure out how to deal with your kids, um, shame on you. This is, they belong to the two of you, not outside sources and i'm not going to look at the outside sources so much unless they become a real problem yeah if you're if your wife or her boyfriend is a drunk who's home all the time and beating the kids and stuff like that then it does come down on you but right. you're the two of you are supposed to be able to figure this out and help each other with the kids you're not to be married to each other i mean you're not uh, <laughs> I'm not, you don't even have to be good friends. You have to figure out how to raise two kids that belong to the two of you, not outside sources. So I'm going to send it to the friend of the court. I'm going to uh, ask that you try and do stuff in the meantime. Maybe you can even figure it out in the meantime. But when you get information from the friend of the court, you need to cooperate with them or else I'll only get one side of the story uh, when right. it comes. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Good luck. Thank Good you, Your Honor. Information from the friend of the court. All right, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you both. Take care. And are you at 1103 North Long Lake Road in Traverse City? I am. All right. This is case 230884 FY1. And uh, charges alleging assault with intent to murder. Count two, um, carrying a dangerous weapon with unlawful intent. Count three, carrying a concealed weapon. And count four, a uh, felony firearm weapon. Ms. Uh, Claxton is here today as your arraignment attorney to assist you through this first hearing. 
And the prosecutor um, present is Mr. Atwood. Top We're right. going to place you into a breakout room so that you and Ms. Claxton can talk confidentially regarding the charges, the possible sentence, and your Miranda rights on, these, on this case. You do not need to do anything. You're going to go in and out of that breakout room automatically. All right? Yes, ma'am. It's and she'll be requesting court appointment. Sorry, we are back um, with Ms. White. So how would you like to proceed, Ms. Claxton? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, we reviewed the complaint, the charges, the maximum penalty, as well as her rights. We'll waive a formal reading, and she'll be requesting court-appointed counsel today. Thank you. Ms. Uh, White, could you please raise your right hand? <coughs> Do some swear and affirm the information you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, this whole hearing, there, I, I, I'm going to warn you right now, it doesn't get weird. Even the defendant acts normal. The, the the attorneys are are good. They make a lot of sense. The judge makes a lot of sense. Everything everything here makes sense. It's just the fact pattern is wild. Yes. All right. I'll be asking you some questions for the court appointed attorney and also for any bond conditions that might be set. So, are, uh, what is your phone number, please? Two three one B A C O N. That's T.C. Bacon with um, parents, paying room and board, renting or buying? I'm buying. Are you single, married, divorced, or separated? I live with my ex-husband, so I'm divorced. And do you have any uh, children living? So she's still available, guys. With you or dependents? I ha they're not dependents, but I have adult, an adult son, adult daughter, her boyfriend, and three grandchildren that live with me. And, but they are not dependent upon you, is They it? are not. All right. Are you working? No, ma'am. I am bipolar and I'm on Social Security. You're on Social Security. Do you have any other source of income? No, ma'am. And do you own a vehicle or real? Uh, you say you're buying, so you do own real estate. What would be the value? Um, 200000 And do you have a vehicle? I do. It's a... 2014 Honda CRV. Are you uh, making payments on that? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any money in the bank? They just deposited my Social Security yesterday. I should have about $800 in there. For so Social Security then. Okay, the court's going to appoint an attorney to assist you on this. Grand Travers uh, Defense Council will be letting you know who that's going to be. And now that... Uh, takes us to your right to have a body set on this case. And I believe we probably have some um, conditions that are going to be set on this. Ms. Claxton, what would you like to say about bond? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, we had a chance to review the praxis in this case. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, um, the only thing that's scored is the charge type for being a felony and criminal history. Her criminal history is very minimal. Um, only two um, misdemeanor charges, one of which was from 2009, the most recent being uh, 2022. Uh, the Praxis doesn't recommend the normal uh, PR bond, however, despite the scoring because of the charges. Um, the charges at this point are just allegations. She is presumed innocent. Um, as you heard, she does have some mental health issues. She informed me that she is uh, working with a psychiatrist when she's out. It's recommended that she be put on GPS tether and have no contact with the alleged victim. She indicated she has no issue with that um, and would be willing to wear a tether. So we're looking for either a high uh, PR bond or uh, some sort of 10% bond that she may be able to post. You'll see that um, there is no failure to appear history. Grandma with the tether. I, I mean, it's hard to wrap your mind around. Um, reported in the praxis as well. We'd ask that the court take those all into consideration as a bond today. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Atwood, I'm sure you have something you'd like to add. I do, Your Honor. I, I would ask that a, a high monetary bond, cash bond, be set. Uh, in this case, I think the defendant presents a uh, an extreme risk uh, to the community. Uh, this was a uh, hair away from a homicide. Uh, we could be here sitting uh, talking about a first-degree murder. Um, 
the, the defendant was captured uh, on a surveillance camera uh, after a um, a small disagreement with her uh, alleged boyfriend, uh, following him uh, up to his residence, uh, removing a pistol from her coat pocket, uh, and attempting to fire a round uh, into his back. Uh, she missed, thankfully, uh, but the round did strike the building. Uh, there were individuals there who were uh, able to see some of it occur. Uh, and uh, obviously, I think her intent, based on the, the circumstances, was to kill him with a firearm. Uh, thankfully, again, that she, she did not accomplish that. Uh, but the risk uh, and the state of mind is there. Uh, homicide, obviously, is one of those offenses that uh, the court can deny bond. Uh, this was not a, a homicide in the, the sense that she did not succeed in what she was doing. But again, uh, her intent was the same uh, as somebody charged with first degree murder. Not a homicide only because she missed. Uh, and uh, there's some history. I was able to speak with the family this the, this morning. Uh, there's some history here of uh, the defendant uh, kind of spiraling mentally uh, in regards to the victim here uh, and his family. Uh, there's been an on again, off again romantic relationship with the victim here. Uh, and uh, he's an 80 year old man, uh, obviously, with some cognitive uh, cognitive issues of his own. Uh, but the family has um, made attempts to separate the two. She's actually so. So she pulls a gun and takes a shot. At an eighty-year-old man with cognitive. Uh, <laughs> it's not funny, but it's funny with cognitive difficulties because she she thinks that that he's getting some on the side. Oh yeah, really been trespassed uh, from the residence that she showed up at. Uh, with the victim where the uh, attempted homicide took place uh, due to fear of uh, some of the residents there and again the victim's family. Uh, she uh, showed up at the victim's daughter's workplace before uh, circling the parking lot in her vehicle uh, looking for a, a vehicle that matches the, the victim's daughter's uh, vehicle's description. Uh, and again, it, it's alleged that she sees the victim's daughter as sort of an impediment to her continued relationship uh, with the victim. Uh, so there's a lot of history here. There's a lot of uh, um, anger that the, the defendant has displayed towards the victim's family and the victim. Uh, she's under this delusion that the victim is uh, sleeping with uh, employees at the, the residence that, that the victim lives at. Uh, she's under the delusion that he's having a relationship with some wealthy uh, woman and I, I think has sort of developed the mindset of, well, if I can't have him, nobody will, uh, which played a part in obviously the attempt at homicide here. So I, the, the offense certainly calls for an extremely high bond. Uh, her state of mind certainly calls for an extremely high bond. Uh, the fact that she's under these delusions and, and, and uh, suffering from bipolar, uh, to me, only supports a higher bond and that she can't be su uh, supervised safely in the community. A GPS tether is not going to do any good. Uh, a GPS tether can't stop a bullet. Uh, and we're thankful, obviously, that this didn't end in a homicide. But again, the state of mind is the same uh, and she presents an extreme risk. And I think that that warrants a higher bond. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you for um, your thoughts from both of you. We, we do have the practice and we are looking at this also. Um, I think what we're going to be doing is the standard bond conditions one through nine. Ms. White, do not plan to leave the state without permission from the court, which probably wouldn't be granted anyway unless it was for medical issues. Um, no alcohol, illegal drugs, marijuana, minor mood altering substances are, are to be in your possession. Now, do you take medications for anything, Ms. White? Yes. And we do need a list of those to the court within 48 hours as to what it is you are taking. Okay. All right. You are going to be subject to breathalyzers, and those are going to be um, twice, three times a day breathalyzers on, an, on a machine, and you will be under the guidance of our pretrial services people for that testing. You are not to uh, possess weapons of any kind. You're not to reside where any weapons are present. So anything you might have that's a weapon has to be turned over to um, someone um, and proof provided to pretrial services. 
You are not to have any contact whatsoever with Robert Dwayne Swanson. That means emails, texting, anything whatsoever, no contact. Now, is it my understanding that you've been trespassed from um, Hawthorne Cottage, which is Grand Traverse Pavilion's area, is that correct? I had a policeman tell me that he had to put it in my hand saying I was trespassed. And he said I was not. He went up to the building with me, with Robert, and with an employee of the Hawthorne, talked to all three of us, and he came out and said, ask Robert, is it okay if she goes in? He said, sure, I want her to come in. Okay, that's not my question. Were you trespassed? And not formally, not a piece of paper. Okay. Um... Mr. Atwood, what would you say about that? Do you say that she has been trespassed? She has been trespassed, Your Honor. I don't, I don't think they gave her a, a piece of paper, nor would they necessarily do that, but okay. she has been told not to go there. Okay, well, now you're being formally told as a bond condition you're not to go um, to Hawthorne Cottage, you're not to be within 500 yards of wherever that might be. So unless you're in the uh, work or have medical reasons to be at Munson, you should not be anywhere on that campus. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, you're also not to uh, have any contact with uh, Mr. Swanson's family. Any family members whatsoever, you're not to have any contact with them, and you're to remain at least 500 yards away from wherever those folks might be. Now, I know, as the um, prosecutor did indicate, a GPS is only no, I mean she might. There might be an alcohol issue here. That I I picked up the same thing. She's she's saying three times a day, from what I heard. As good as the um, piece of equipment strapped to you, but we are going to be require a GPS. Yes, ma'am. And that will have you must have that before you can be released. Yes, ma'am. Now the public is at risk here. We are concerned about that because. Um, the alleged discharge of a gun, whether it hit someone or not, it was done in public where uh, the public was available to be. So we are very concerned about that issue. That's why you're not to have weapons of any kind whatsoever. Now you said you were doing some counseling. Where are you doing your counseling? I have a psychiatrist and I was supposed to be started counseling and she never, we never got to do the um find the counselor so that will be done immediately. I don't know yet who that is. I am under the guidance of a, a psychiatrist right now. Who I need to be? get under. Who's I'm your, sorry. Who's your psychiatrist right now? Dr. Colombo at um, MCHC. I think that's where I go. NMC? Yeah. NM yeah. Up here by Hall Street. All right, you're to continue counseling right now with um, your psychiatrist, Dr. Colombo. Is that what you said it was? Yes, and she's trying. We kind of forgot the last meeting. I need to get into counseling regularly there, and I have not been able to do it. I All right, well, as a condition of bond, you're to continue counseling with Dr. Colombo and provide proof to our pretrial services people. Now, obviously, if you... Um, you work out that you're going to be working with a different psychiatrist, that's fine. But proof must be provided and continued counseling as part of the bond conditions. Yes, ma'am. And you're to remain, um, okay, so. So who else is living at, at your place of residence besides yourself, you said? My ex-husband. My daughter, 38, I believe, her boyfriend, and my three grandchildren. Okay, and I did mention you're not to be uh, living anywhere near um, where there's any firearms or weapons. So if there are any firearms or weapons there, you're either going to have to move and provide um, your residence to the court, or they are going to have to do something with their firearms um, while you're Yes, ma'am. <laughs> No violent behavior towards anyone. Be respectful of all court staff, law enforcement, and care providers. You are not to um, drive a motor vehicle without a valid license, registration, insurance, and not with 
uh, alcohol or drugs in your person. All right, I believe I've covered all of the contacts and no contacts and the testing conditions, the GPS. And again, the concern of the court is for the public as well as the victim. Your bond on this is going to be a $750,000 cash surety bond. You are Does that mean I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Your next hearing date, you have the right to have a probable cause conference within seven to 14 days of today. That date is going to be December 8th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's, an in, that's a Zoom hearing with um, your attorney, the prosecutor, and the magistrate or judge. You have the right to have a preliminary exam within um, five to seven days after that probable cause. We are scheduling that for December 14th at 11 o'clock in the morning. That is a personal hearing. You must be at the courthouse in person with your attorney you'll be meeting with the prosecutor and the judge. Um, I don't believe I've missed any conditions. Mr. Atwood, Ms. Claxton? Your Honor, I, I guess I neglected to ask, and I, I probably should have. Given the, um, the issues with the victim's family members, um, I would ask for a no contact order with any family members of the victim as well, if the court's willing to grant that. I think I mentioned that, yes. You may, oh, okay, perfect, hopefully, thank you. Uh, maybe I blocked, blanked out, you know. Technologies. I, I might have as well, Your Honor. But yes, it is no contact with any of the victim's family. Uh, the 500 Thank yards does also um, go along with those victims. And if you have names, obviously, um, our pretrial services people will be in touch so that they can add those to the GPS. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. I believe we've covered all the requirements of the felony arraignment on this. Is, are there any questions? No question. No, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being here today, uh, Mr. Atwood, Ms. White. You can let the officers know you've completed your arraignment for today and uh, that they could uh, send in Mr. Shank for us, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good afternoon. Well, you too also. Thank you very much for appearing. Sure. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Holy wow. That's magical. Separate order. And quite frankly, it's it's your fault if you didn't get the in. Okay, I haven't seen this one, but it's our it's our cranky referee guy. Information because they did not have the correct address. Now, as far as you saying I'm not working, why aren't why aren't you working? I haven't been able to find employment yet, Your Honor. Well, how'd you lose your other employment? Um, they were doing cutbacks at work, and I was the last person to be hired. Um, so they made an excuse to to fire me. Wait a minute! They made an excuse to fire you because if if you voluntarily or are fired, it goes totally different than if you were laid off. And it sounds like you were let go by them uh, gotcha. for some reason. And and the friend of the court is going to check into it. So I mean, you might as well tell them. Yeah, I'm telling the truth. I was fired. And at, at no, so I was fired April 27th. This order. Okay, so you weren't laid off. You were fired for cause. That, that's what the judge was trying to get at. Now let's hear what it is. Went into effect in May. At no time have I made the type of money to support. I was paying 230 some dollars a month in child support. Now it's almost 1700 And I'm $11,000 in arrears. I, I'm not going to be able to, and I haven't been able, able to find a job to make that type of money to pay that type of support. Well, what kind of, I mean, you have, since April, you have not found a job? Not enough to pay $1,700. Are, are you working at a job? No, Your Honor. I do not have a employment at this time. How are you living? Um, I'm currently living with my boyfriend. So he's paying the bills? Correct. Well, you understand that even if I, she's banging it out, Judge. If I refer it to the friend of the court, you're still going to be responsible for a job, whether you have it or not. Yes, Your Honor, and I'm not denying any type of responsibility and and you know paying for my children. I'm just asking the court to set me up for success, not failure. There's no way that I can afford seventeen hundred dollars a month 
that's a $1,400 increase. Even if I were to find a job today. It was maybe, based on your income. Pardon? It was based on your income and the overnights and his income and stuff like that. Correct, but I, I currently don't have that job anymore, Your Honor. Well, no, and but if you, are, if you are voluntarily or, or you're fired, uh, you may be you may be imputed at that amount, whether you get it or not. Now, Mr. Weisenbaugh, would like, I have not given him a chance. What do you have to say, sir? Uh, I, back in, the last payment was received early May. Um, she had said that she had had that job for over five, like five, six, seven years. Um, when I, cause we had, we had tried to have some communication earlier. Um, and she she's living with her boyfriend it was because she had lost her last place which it usually happens about every eight months her residence has changed very often um and i did try to i provided the friend of the court with her last known address um she was living in standale and in the, the last two addresses she had lived in and she's currently living with the same boyfriend that she's lived with moved out lived with moved out um and I just, I, I failed to see why seven months now, today's December 1st, I believe, of why there would be not just some, but. It's always the same. She's got a simp that will just take her in whenever, whenever she's crashed. That's it. Zero, zero assistance and, and let alone the, the inconsistent um, living arrangement. Um, that, that's just, that was my only concern. Well, my, my concern is similar is that ma'am, you know you have an obligation and it's not going to go away and they're going to eventually issue a warrant to come pick you up, okay, for not paying child support. Um, it seems to me that uh, anybody can get a job at, I, I can go to McDonald's and get a job at $15 an hour and pay some of my child support. Yes, sir. But yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize, sir. Um, right. And I, I just wanted to want to address the the what she had put into her letter to the front of the court that I received in the mail. Um, well, two things. When they did this adjustment back in May, I did ask if anything needed to be sent to her. They said that they would take care of it. For one, the front of the court was supposed to take care of that. They sent it to them. Okay. Yes. And she did mention that um, that I work multiple jobs and my wife also works full time. That doesn't I was, come into play. Exactly. Okay. That was my your, question. I your was wife working yeah. or your wife inheriting does not come into play. You working multiple jobs does. Um, it, that is because I, I have to do 100% of the support. Um, my I understand. Older and and I, I take things into consideration. I'm not, it's your total income, her total income, but your wife's does not come into it and things like okay, that. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I don't know, uh, ma'am, even if I re refer it to the friend of the court, uh, there'll be no modifications that would be even possible till December 1. Um, even if I send it to the friend of the court, your statement that I'm not working and can't, you know, uh, I don't even know that you're trying to find a job. Uh, I am. I even well, was with the resource or the parent resource program with front of the court they sent me a link to michigan works and that that is it but i mean i definitely am not denying the fact that i owe child support and i would love to be able to see my kids and to be able to you know have a job and to be able to support them i'm not denying that your honor well, why, just, why don't you go out and work part-time while you're looking for a job and start sending some money for support your Honor, seventeen hundred dollars a month. I can't live on that. I wouldn't. I'm not be saying I understand that, and it might be, but you got to understand: if you voluntarily or are fired, we can make it so that your income is imputed at that same amount if it is appropriate. All right, but also when and if there's eventually going to be a warrant for you for not paying any child support, and you can't sit back and just say gee, I don't have a job because anybody can make some money and make some payments to him. Apparently, you don't have to make any payments for your living expenses. So you could go to McDonald's, you could make $15 an hour times, I don't even know, 20 hours a week. 
um, you could bring home a couple hundred dollars and you could send it to them every week because you don't have other expenses. Your, your every other expenses is being taken care of. And instead he's footing the whole bill. What if the kids lived with you and father was out of the picture? Would you just sit back and go, hey kids, uh, I got no job. I, well, gee, I know Absolutely. I gotta take care of you, but I'm not. You would have gone out and found something to get going with, okay? It's uh, it's pretty clear to me, all right? I'm not saying that your amount should totally stay at the amount that it is right now, but it's gonna stay there unless and until the friend of the court finds different. And it, and it bothers me when you don't give the friend of the court and keep them up to date, and then I gotta send it through a second time to have them look at the, at the amount of money. And it's really just because you didn't do your part. Because all you got to do is keep them up to date. They they send you the information. You respond to it. Uh, they make some calculations. You just determine whether you should or should not. And, uh, and it can end up in front of me if there's no uh, agreement. But um, this is this falls on you, ma'am. I mean, your excuses really are, are no different than everybody else's. Gee, I'm not. I can't afford it. I can't do this. I can't do that. There are three kids, uh, 16, 15, and 12, I believe. They, this is a you problem. They, you're letting him foot all the expenses for it. And just because, I mean, I've been out of work since April. It's because, and if you didn't have your boyfriend, what would you do? You'd go out and find something because you'd have to. All right, I'm going to make one uh, one more referral to the friend of the court for to determine what is appropriate child support. I'm not changing it right now, and, in, and any change will not be effective before today's date because this is when it was requested. If yeah, there's exactly. any, if there is anything to um, change, I'm not. I don't know what the friend of the court's going to determine. They're going to give you potential income. I can tell you that You're, they're not going to give you a zero income. Uh, because you are fully capable of working. You worked up until the end of April. You, you're you're capable of working. Um, I would be out there finding a job because, as I said, uh, I don't know how long the front of the court's going to wait until they, uh, with nothing coming in, until they're going to issue a warrant for you to be Your paid. Honor, I, I ask you to reconsider backdating it. At no time was no. I... I do that. not. I do not backdate child support. That does not grow retroactive. When you ask for it, I can say okay from this day forward. But we do not wait back till. I mean, you could have come in the day you lost your job and said, "I lost my job. I need. I need some child support relief." All right. Um, whatever. Absolutely. It does not get backdated. I will not backdate it. Mr. Oh, that's setting me up for failure, Your Honor. No, I didn't set you up for failure, ma'am. By by not allowing it to be backdated to a reasonable no, amount. I'm no. already eleven thousand in arrears. It it is not. It is what your responsibility is to the court and to the kids. And you did not provide the information to the friend of the court so that they. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is Frederick's fault somehow. <laughs> could even send it to you. And then you want me to go back and say, hey, gee, forgive me for all of this. You're responsible. You are responsible to keep the friend of the court notified as to your address and whatnot. If they can't get in touch with you, not sure. that's your fault. That's not Mr. Weisenbaugh's or anybody else's but yours. I will not backdate it. It will start probably effective December 1 if there is a lesser amount. Mr. Weisenbaugh, do you have anything final to say? Yes, sir. Um I, for years, it was based off of minimum wage because when we first went through this, when I received full custody with support and everything was ordered, um, she had essentially disappeared for about eight to nine months and then slowly began um, communication back. But That's I, did, yeah. I did an emergency order um, for custody and they went through the same process. Right. They, could not, they could not locate her at that time as well. Um, okay. For years, it was only the the bare minimum of based off minimum wage, which for the longest time it, it just it wasn't enough. And I did work multiple jobs over the years. Yeah. I, I am in a better situation, 
um, just with, you know, working and, and the friend of the court's going to look at all the financial information. Okay. okay. Yes. And, and they, that's what they did. They said they based it off her uh, tax records because they, they couldn't. That's right. Yeah. They, um, they had her taxes for 22, I think it was, and they based it yes, off sir. of that. And there was yes, very little reason that she couldn't continue other than she got herself fired from her job. It, and my only request, the only reason I requested that it be just re-looked at, I didn't ask for an amount or anything like that. I just asked if they could reevaluate. Um, kids are getting older. I We have two high schoolers together. Uh, and then my our youngest is actually in middle school. And there's sports camps. There's all these um my daughter wrestles um at a very high level so we travel and it, it's there's a lot of costs involved i with understand and yeah. this unfortunately child support and i don't mean to cut you off but i got a lot no, of no, okay. to hear this no. uh, unfortunately it costs a lot to raise children whether she pays enough to pay her portion or not will be based upon the finances that the friend of the court determines we have a court there's a program through the computer the numbers are put into and it spits it out and says what she has to pay all right and yes, and it is up to the parties to keep them keep them up to date on their uh, address so that we can do it and whatnot all right they did their best and at the time that they did it it was appropriate she didn't keep them up to date it will not i'm not even allowed to retroactively modify but i would not anyhow um we'll see what happens you know all the all the money and the, even whether whatever she's got to pay she's obviously not paying it anyhow um and there you know we don't have debtors prison but i guarantee you ma'am it does not go away and you'll be paying it till the kids are 40 uh, if you don't pay it off they will continue to go after you they'll continue to take tax returns uh garnish whatever they can so and sir that that i i just I, just a side note that is another issue i've been dealing with with the irs um i believe she has been claiming the children every year because i have not been able to claim them um is that in the judgment that that was not i just discovered that in the last year or so by working with the irs um they in around i, I it took a while to for them to confirm but i told them exactly who would have all the ch the children's information and they they did confirm um, I know that's not in the judgment and I know that's not part of it, but yeah. that has been... that's between you and the IRS. And I try not to ever contact the IRS. I try yes, to stay sir. far away from them as I can. Thank right? you. So, uh, I'm going to refer it to the friend of the court to, for a child support determination. They'll take a look at it. And, uh, when they come through with an order, if either of you object to it, I'll end up having a hearing on it based on what they say, but your obligation your arrears do not go away your obligation continues for now until there is another order in place good luck everybody look for ma'am you better make sure the friend of the court has your address they do your honor well because if uh, <laughs> they will send it to the address you gave them so and they do have it on file your honor all right good luck I everybody thank you thank, thank you, you sir well, there you have it granny's out of control and judge frederick still cranky but we love him we absolutely love him he was having none of this crap none of it <laughs> he doesn't even hide his disdain which which we all agree with honestly oh good times all right that's all i got today thank you all for coming out i appreciate it i'll see you soon